Hey everyone, John Grimsmo here, bringing you a quick little lathe video. So I've been playing with this lathe uh, yesterday and today, making some really cool stop pins. So, here's the part that I'm making. Teeny tiny 1 8 diameter by the perfect length that I want in the material that I want, and then I'll heat treat them to the hardness that I want. And now that I've finally got the program dialed in, I'm just working on fine-tuning the last little thing. Like, the surface finish that I'm getting, let's see if you can see this. See the one on this side is shinier, if I can get it to focus. Anyway, you can see the shiny one, I polished that one on the scotch bread wheel, and the other one is coming off the mill, so. And when I look at it under the loop, it's very gritty and grainy. These are 440C stainless steel, which is not the most fun thing to turn. I've been trying these two inserts. Unfortunately, I don't actually know what brand or coating or whatever these inserts are because I got them from my local tool store and they didn't tell me anything about them so I need to be better about asking specifics next time or buying online or whatever so I know exactly what I'm buying or requesting from my local store exactly what to get um, because then I can fine-tune what carbide grade what coating and whatever works best for stainless steel for the 400 series stainless however it's not such a big deal to polish them it takes just a few seconds on the scotch bread wheel so that's fine for now and the inserts that I'm using are working okay um, they are chipping and building up the edge a little bit which I need to work on I need to put my quality chem coolant in here I think that'll help a lot but anyway that's not really what I want to talk about I put up the bar puller video already I'm um, using the bar puller it still works awesome I love it I'm just adding a quick little addition to the lathe that I think is going to be pretty cool. Simple, easy, but I like it. So I just finished a round of parts. Open the latch. I love seeing the end of the bar just stuck in the end of the bar puller here because it pulled out the last little bit out of the collet. And it parked there and it just knows that that's the end because it's counted it. So I look over and I see, oh, it's done because it pulled out the last bit of the bar. So I love seeing that. It's kind of cool. And then sometimes I can wiggle it out. Sometimes I have to jog it back and clamp it in the collet and then pull it back. So maybe it takes a few extra seconds to do it this way, but at least I know I am actually at the end of the bar. Not have the unknown of being, oh, is there like 10 thou left in there or 10 inches, who knows? So especially with a bar puller, uh, an automatic bar puller, but also with the manual bar puller, when you have a length of bar, you can calculate exactly how many parts you can get out of that bar if you know exactly how long your part is plus the cutoff, which of course you do because this is CNC. The parts that I'm making right now, I know that they're about 0.375 with the cut. And then I need another half inch to hold it in the collet plus the stick out to be good. So I measure the bar and then I minus the extra bit at the end, so I minus half an inch and then I divide that by the 0.375 per part and then I have the number of parts that I can fit into each bar. All these ones I bought are 12 inches but sometimes I'll cut one off to zero in the tools or whatever and then I have a weird size left. So I pull it out, measure it. I used to walk across the shop to get the tape measure, measure it, whatever. But I realized if I had a tape measure, actually I wanted to buy a tape measure to keep on the, on the lathe here, a magnetic one. And then Eric's like, why don't you just tape a tape measure onto the lathe um, so that it's always there. Genius! Love it! Kudos to Eric, little bro power there, figuring out the easiest solution. So on the side of the door here for the um, electronics enclosure, there's a perfect little strip right here that I can double-sided sticky tape with my 3M foam double-sided adhesive. So I'm just going to lay that down, stick this on, and uh, easy peasy. When I'm working on the lathe, I'm always standing over here. I'm never standing right here, so I don't need the tape to read this way. I'm standing here, I pick up my bar, I go to put it in, or from the front, need to know how long it is, oh I look right there, 12 inches. And for this purpose I only need to know to the nearest quarter inch, so I don't need like micrometer accuracy on this kind of stuff. Exactly 12 inches, I know I can get, I think it's 30 something parts out of here if I do my math. Put it in, we're good to go. So now, of course, i got to show you guys some turning because this is a turning video. So let's uh, zoom in close. We'll turn the coolant off. Normally, I leave coolant on for the stainless stuff, but it should be fine for one or two parts without coolant, and we'll um, get a close look at it. The funny thing about trying to turn the coolant off for filming, I can't just click a button on the screen because if I do that, then the coolant just keeps coming on with every tool change. Um, so the only way is to unplug it from the back of the machine. 
not a big deal, but I just have to remember to plug it in again after. So like I was saying, to get this nub out, I can't just do it with my hands. I might be able to do it with pliers, but I'm just going to jog it in, into there, close the collet, jog it out. I think the collet was already closed. Open it, and there it comes out. Perfect. Another thing that bugs me about bar stock that you buy. Um, this is quarter inch bar stock, and this stuff is .249, <clears throat> or thereabouts, so just under nominal size. Anything just over nominal size does not fit in the collets. And if it's too tight, like some of the titanium I buy is .253, or .252, two or three thousandths over size. And it's really hard push to get it into the collet and then the bar puller struggles a little bit because the bar puller will slip before the collet will let it move now I did take this collet and you see how there's three grooves in it I took it out, I took a screwdriver to it, pried them apart and I was able to open it up a little bit but it's still really annoying so ideally you get stock that is at nominal size or just under I gotta move the move the gang slide up so that I can get my bar in through the gap here. Now I'm trapped by the camera, so pardon me while I tilt you. Oh, and another thing with, with new bars, wipe them off, keep them clean, deburr at least the end that's going into the machine, which I haven't done yet, so again I'm trapped by the camera and I have to get out. Alright, magically deburred, going in, slide down. See, when it's a good size, it just slips right in perfectly. Um, to find the length of stock, you know, when you put it in, it's got to be the first, a good size. I've got one of those little angle thingies with the stop on it, but I haven't used it yet. It's stuck in my drawer. I should probably start using that, but another way I go is uh, type in tool 6 and then take the slide down. Make sure there's no chip on the end. And then just use one of the tools to bump it to a good depth. That's too far. So I set the tool to 30 to plus 30 thousandths, and then I know it's good. So there's 30 thousandths. And then I close the collet, click the button, boom. You can see how it pulls back a little bit. Um, so 30 thousandths oversized pulls back about 10 or 15, and then I have some stock to cut off. So let's get it nice and tight. Nice and close. Alright, so I edited the code so it just does one part, but it's still going to pull the bar out and uh, do the whole cycle and just stop at the end. Um, one thing to pay attention to is the first cut with this tool down here that you can't see. Um, it's a pretty aggressive cut and it makes a really wicked chip. Here's the chip that comes off of it. It is blue and bronze and huge and thick and really cool. It is an aggressive cut. And it's destroying the insert over time, but it's still making a good cut, so whatever. It's just a roughing tool. Let's try this camera angle, see how it goes. Looks pretty good. Alright, I'm running out of battery here, gotta go charge it up. I could definitely see that the part was getting bronze colored, which means it's getting way too hot. So coolant is definitely a good thing for this, this metal right here. 